pretty much everybody I've ever met that knew me in any manner that uh, I believe could have had an expectation that I should have been responsible to having a relationship with them, knew that when I was 18 years old, after I graduated from high school, my father said to me, he was not going to provide me with any support. And I was on my own. And I explained this to people. I was the first woman in my family to graduate from high school and try to go to college. It was very important to me that I not get on welfare. Other women in my family, my mother's, sis my mother's sisters, were on welfare. And this was a sense of distress for my father because they would often come to my father for money and support. I was the eldest. I was deemed to have the capabilities to go very far. And my father said, I'm not going to help you. He didn't provide any financing on any of the loans I anticipated being able to get for college. He didn't provide me with any startup money. I worked jobs since I was legally able to work. I bought my own first car from my father. I paid my own insurance. These were the kinds of things that my father tried to instill in me. Even after a certain point, once I started working, I had to pay for half of my Christmas presents. This was the kind of relationship I had with my father. This was what he had hoped to instill in me and the kind of woman he had hoped I would become. Now, I did not know exactly what the potential full implications were when my father said, at 18, you're cut off. But I'll tell you what I understand it means now. My father has absolutely no right to any expectation that I'll pay for anything for him. It's my responsibility to do what is necessary to assure that the conditions exist for the respectful treatment of elders in our community. But I don't pay my daddy's retirement. If somebody else decided they were going to retaliate against me or my father because there was a specific special expectation that I fit certain indicators that they had wanted to exploit, to launder money, engage in illegal smuggling, attempt to extort people, bribe people, murder people for political opportunism. That is not the arrangement me and my family had with each other. Now, if you're a psychologist or a sociologist, or maybe do psychological operations for some formal or informal military organization, perhaps you want to project, speculate. I never really understood the whole concept of subjectivity and objectivity from that particular perspective. It's not something that ever felt right to me. As a journalist, there were certain things I understood. I took people at their word. If there were discrepancies, I gave them the benefit of the doubt. Let me tell you, years later, some of them pan out a lot more than other people in their alleged professional credentials did at the time or over time. Today, I had to do a training for a certification I already should have had, to be honest with you, but I did it today. But before I explain that, I want to read some things to you. This is from Inri Charity Colleen Krauss, originally dated for June 2nd of 2017. Does anybody know what happened on June 1st of 1987? I didn't at the time. I found out today, and I believe it is why people in Texas, people in the federal government, people in other states that believe they have some form of professional credentialing, including in connection with college, decided they were just going to take every other thing I presented and subordinate it to being dated for the day after. That their intentions were to give me and my life and my livelihood no other fucking options except to follow through on deals they had set up before 1987. Number 58. 
Krauss was threatened with physical violence while receiving services at name of the location in late January of 2017 by po Houston police officer Cuffey. Cuffey told Krauss that if you don't keep your mouth shut, you are going to get your ass kicked. After Krauss protested the depiction of rape on a television that Cuffey was watching. Now I'm going to insert a footnote. Cuffey's African American. Most of the people in that room were African American, including what was at that point that day a group of young Christian men that were doing their volunteer service requirements and administering services to the homeless. An overwhelming majority of the people that utilize this particular service provider are men, mostly African American men. It espouses or alleges that it's affiliated with the Catholic Church. My concern is that the police officer was sitting like this, watching the television, right above the portal one must enter to take a shower. And on the television was a light-skinned white woman having sex with a light-skinned white man that originally appeared consensual and then in the foreground were at least four to five African-American men busting through a door, grabbing him, throwing him off to the rest of the men to beat the shit out of him while the one African-American man jumped on top of the woman and started raping her. Her moans of ecstasy turned to screams of fright and terror. That's why I needed to get my ass kicked. Other people were enjoying themselves. I did not think it was appropriate. They literally did this. Not only did they literally do this, they did this in front of a group of men who were minors. And it happened to fit the same racial demographic as the cop who threatened to kick my ass. Number 59, Krauss was verbally threatened and physically assaulted a few days later while receiving services at name of the provider by Houston Police Department officer Daniels. Krauss was pursued throughout the cafeteria and physically accosted without Daniels putting her under arrest or declaring attempt to arrest. Daniels pursued Krauss after she exited the building and brought her inside to place her in handcuffs after she reacted to his pursuit. Krauss was not read any rights or put under arrest, but Daniels did take a picture of Krauss on his private cell phone. Krauss was banned from the facility and was taken by another officer in a police car down the street. Now, this was before Valentine's Day of 2017. It was around the time of the Super Bowl. It just so happened that when I encountered Daniels, I was standing in a line to get to the front door. And the man behind me and the man in front of me were talking over me about hooking up a drug deal for marijuana within earshot of the cop at the door. I commented in an effort to let them know that if they were trying to broker a drug deal on me trying to get food, I was not going to permit that. The guy in front of me got inside, no problem. Then when it came my turn, the man wanted a hand job. He wanted me to jack him off in front of everybody after he chastised me. And when I said no, he beat me in front of everybody in a ornate manner. Now, did he get the billy club and beat me? No, he didn't. I think he expected he was going to grab my arm, grab me by the shoulder, stick my arm behind my back, and then escort me out. But I knew about that. And so instead, it was deflected, and I did not escalate, and I think he got a hard-on. 
and decided he was going to play with me in front of everybody. That's what he did. And all those other men in there saw that man with a hard on while I'm yelling, is anybody going to say anything? Is anybody going to do anything? This really happened. About two months later, I tried to return. He saw me down the street and called out, I still got your picture. You're banned. You can't eat here. But I still got your picture. Just today. Section 521453, fictitious license or certificate, Texas Transportation Code. Section 521451, possession of fake IDs, Texas Transportation Code. Section 10401 of the Texas Beverage Code, lewd, immoral, indecent, Conduct. Six, permitting lewd or vulgar entertainment or acts. Seven, permitting solicitations of persons for immoral or sexual purposes. The best part about this is Texas has a law that says it is okay for a minor to engage in alcohol consumption if he's doing it as part of a sting operation for a peace officer. It also says that if a minor is caught with alcohol and has been a witness to sexual assault, he or she can't be charged. Why? These laws were on the books when the Houston Police Department issued me an ID card that is against laws related to alcohol consumption. A fake ID that was coded to be a derivative for a fucking uranium company. Let me ask you something. If you're smuggling uranium while you're raping a fucking woman in front of minors that are smoking fucking pot, can they be charged? What if they're smoking crack? What if they're smoking meth? What if they're smoking kush and they're drinking moonshine? You just keep up in the ante to see how exotic it can fucking get before the bitch dies? Are you able to claim credit on those toe tags? With your little hookups with the fucking army? Dot, dot, dot. I was never a fucking hooker, asshole. It was a goddamn fucking tongue. I was never a fucking stripper, you piece of shit. It was a fucking tongue. The entire time I've been in Texas, they've been racketing shit through the fucking former president's ex-fucking wife. And every fucking one of you jackasses ate it and abetted it. You want to blame it on the girls? 